Welcome to the preview for the Sunshine Coast Elder College session for fall 2020. We acknowledge that we are holding this online session today on the traditional and unceded lands of the Coast Salish people. It is through the good stewardship and generosity of the Shishal Nation since time immemorial that we are able to enjoy being here today. My name is Keith Maxwell and I am the chair of the program committee for the Elder College on the Sunshine Coast. That's a position I'll be leaving later this month, but I will remain a member of that committee. The world today seems a different universe from the one we were in when we last held the Elder College preview session in December last year. Some will recall how we crowded almost 60 senior citizens into a, a large classroom at the Seashell Capilano University campus. Much has changed. To kick off the preview, the chair of the Sunshine Coast Elder College Board of Directors, Ann Hopkins, has some opening remarks. Ann? Thank you, Keith. This year is the 20th anniversary of the Sunshine Coast Elder College. In 20 years, we have evolved from a small and enterprising group that offered a few courses into a successful force for third age education on the coast. We have met a need. We offer up to 30 courses a year attended by more than 800 participants. And we also put on free community-wide programs and lectures. Paraphrasing Darwin, it is not the strongest of the species that survives nor the most intelligent. It is the one most adaptable to change. Elder College intends to survive and has adapted to change by going online. We have moved forward with our program and we are offering 11 courses on Zoom as well as free Zoom introductory classes. Until now, our in-person classes created opportunities for social interaction and we wish that to continue. All our classes will open half an hour early so we have time to socialize as well as become familiar with Zoom. By way of background, we are a self-funded, not-for-profit organization and receive no grants or outside sources of funding other than course fees. And we have reduced our course fees by over 20% in recent years. Also, we are a volunteer run organization and our course presenters are volunteers who give freely of their time to share their expertise. While we hope for a return to in-person classes in the future, we are reacting to necessity and the future is uncertain. It's a new world and one in which we need to keep our age group safe and protected. We have an exciting and interesting fall program and we hope you will continue to support us and sign up for our courses during this time. Thank you, Anne. I would now like to introduce Thomas Cairn the incoming chair of our program committee to speak out our, about our new registration process. Thomas? Not only are we adapting to deliver classes in an online format only, but we also have been forced to make major changes on how to handle registrations due to delays and uncertainties as to if and when our previous partner, the SCRD, would be able to restart the recreation program and handle the usual publicity and registration for us, we have decided to go forward on our own. I have prepared a number of slides to point out to you the key aspects that are new for fall 2020. The things to, uh, that are different is that publication of our program is via our website and newsletter and ads in the Coast Reporter. Registration is via our own website, not via the SCRD. Payment for courses is via our own website using PayPal or credit card only. The cost is now only $35 since we are not required to collect GST. Next slide, please. For the registration, uh, it's done directly on our website uh, on the uh, sunshinecoastelderCollege.ca uh, slash fall 2020. To assist you during registration, we now have a dedicated phone 604-865-0795, 604-865-0795, 
with voicemail so that you can leave a short message and one of our volunteers will be able to phone you back. And we also have a dedicated email address for registration questions. Uh, it's registrar at sunshinecoastelderCollege.ca. Next. Payment for course fees. When you select your courses, course or courses, uh, they will be in a shopping cart, just like you are used to from other online shopping. When you have completed your selection, you are directed to the payment part. Payment will be accepted via PayPal or via Visa or MasterCard. Remember the good news, cost is just $35 per course. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> For all general inquiries, uh, suggestions, complaints, etc., you may use the contact possibility on our website. Uh, go to the contact page, or there is new an info email address info at Sunshine Coast Elder College .ca. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. moment okay um our first design is karen cog to introduce artists in the studio karen karen over to you hi everyone uh the artist in the studio course this year continues the format this annual fall elder college course with visits to artist studios on the sunshine coast However, as you've already heard this year, we're going to do things differently with online learning. So we'll be visiting the artists virtually in their studios. We are fortunate that our artists and presenters will provide a mix of different media types, ranging from two and to three dimensional art. Many uh, and all of the artists live and work on the Sunshine Coast. So you may already know them or have seen examples of their work. All artists have generously agreed to share their time and enthusiasm for their work with us in this new Sunshine Coast Elder College online learning format adventure. During this fall course preview, I will first of all describe the course schedule and requirements. Next, I will introduce each artist and then present their session outline that they have created for you. Next slide, please. So this course takes place over five Tuesday mornings, um, and during which time the artists will showcase their work, discuss how they work, describe and demo their media techniques and styles, and engage participants in discussion. So there will be time for lots of socialization. As a participant for this course, you will require a computer, a tablet, or such as an iPad, and an internet connection, a Wi-Fi connection. A link will be provided for you to the Zoom application. Next slide, please. These are the dates and the artists that will be presenting in this course. We have George Pratt for September the 19th, he's a stone sculptor. Sandy Kay, who's a painter, September 15th. Coralie Sweeney, who's a painter and sculptor on September 22nd. Ruth Rogers, who's a pastel painter on September 29th, and Marlene Loden, who's an abstract painter for October the 6th. Sandy Kay, during Sandy's session, she will demo painting in stages to show the transparent glazing technique over a textured ground. One of Sandy's goals is to show how principles of design can establish a strong focal point. Her demos will show a technique that enables the artist to work with a limited palette and result in a beautiful painting that even a beginner can master. Her subject will be a woodland view and participants will have time to engage in questions and answers. Coralie Sweeney is an artist who likes to imbue her art with a wee bit of humor. Uh, she is looking forward to having folks join her in her studio where you can view her studio and her gallery, be introduced to her media, which is acrylic paints, media, 
do a sculpture clay demo, discuss an art project from seed of idea to creating the narrative and conceptualizing how the artwork can best convey a story. And her intent is to instigate smiles. Ruth Rogers. Ruth Rogers is a well-known artist on the coast who is a, an art teacher and also an educator. She'll show us how to paint landscapes with pastels. Participants will be able to define naturalistic style of painting, describe the medium of soft, dry pastels, identify five critical elements to design, and describe the steps in creating the creation of a typical soft pastel painting. She'll also describe the appropriate framing techniques for pastel paintings and identify the National Pastel Society and other resources for further learning. Our last artist in this series will be Marlene Loden. Marlene is an abstract painter and she is hoping to share the mysterious world of abstract art through a series of fun demos, exercises, and introducing seven design elements of art and show how abstract art uses them to convey ideas and emotions along with encouraging questions throughout the demos. Participants in this session will be able to approach abstract art with greater curiosity, understand a bit of the history of the movement, be familiar with the seven elements of design, and want to be able to create their own abstract art piece. Look forward to seeing some of you who may be interested in viewing these artists at our Artisan Studio for 2020. Thank you, Corrine. Up next is Michael Bradley. Just a moment while I get your... Good. Uh, Michael Bradley, uh, and he'll talk about three courses uh, for the fall 20, 2020. He's facilitating the courses, course, courses named Drawdown Astronomy and Restorative Justice. Michael, over to you. Thank you, Keith. Good morning, everyone. Well, good morning now. Don't know what time you're going to be watching this. This the first class that I'm going to talk about is Drawdown, and it's the latest in the series at Elder College dealing with environmental issues, specifically around climate change. Uh, before Fridays, 10 to noon, uh, October 2nd, 9, 16, 23. Next. The presenter is Judith Gordon, and it's based on a book. The book you may well have seen. It certainly was a bestseller a couple of years ago when it first came out. It's since evolved into a whole project around the book. Next. Next, please. The definition of, the, sorry. Uh, Please go back. This is the definition of drawdown. For those of you who haven't heard the term, it occurs, drawdown occurs at the point in time when the concentration of greenhouse gases peaks and starts to decline on a year to year basis. The point that we all hope comes sooner rather than later. Next. And it's based on the book, which I mentioned so earlier, uh, earlier, the most comprehensive plan ever proposed to reverse global warming. It tries to make practical solutions. Next. What we're trying to do is to shift the conversation concerning climate change from the doom and gloom that one often hears to one more of possibility for the future and to identify opportunities for us individually and people taking part in the class uh, to actually engage in processes um, which will try to achieve the goal of drawdown. Next. It will delineate various solutions to the problem of global warming, discover that by taking action within our communities, we can all be part of the solution. Next. And we'll learn about the Eco Challenge, a 21-day program, which will be news to me. I, new to me. I have heard about this, but haven't heard the details yet. Uh, and that's trying to identify projects locally where individuals can learn about drawdown solutions and contribute to reversing global warming. Next. 
The presenter is Judith Gordon. It'll be on four Fridays, October 2nd, 23rd, 10 to noon. This is an example of the sort of uh, drawdown solution projects that are being worked on in different places, educating um, young women and girls, reforestation projects, elimination of food waste. Um, from the project drawdown 21 day program, the hope is that groups from the class will actually be able to identify local projects, which they will then be able to continue uh, and engage with in time going forward. Next. So complete change of subject now to astronomy. It's been a few years since the Elder College offered a class on astronomy and uh, high time that we did it again. There is of course an active local astronomy club which has been providing lectures and so forth but this is this class is going to be more about um, a, a four-week overview of astronomy, how you might get involved in it, uh, some of the interesting developments that have been taking place recently. Four Thursdays, two to four, um, and November 5 to 26, as you see there. Next. They'll be presented by various members from the Sunshine Coast Astronomy Club. Next. It'll be a four week class and the idea is we'll cover the science and the practice of astronomy. Next. We'll present the timeline of the astronomical discoveries which have been made by humanity from the very earliest times to the present day. There was a remarkable amount of knowledge uh, that was discovered by very early civilizations all around the earth and we'll cover many of those. Next, we'll do the usual as you would expect the celestial sphere from our solar system all the way out into the deep sky and out to the big bang. We'll try to cover that, trying to get that squeezed into one week, quite uh, an accomplishment if we can pull it off, but we will try. Next. We'll cover cosmology and the principles of cosmology, the science behind the origin and development of the universe and how that has been evolving, especially in the last, last hundred years or so. Next. Choosing and using a telescope or a pair of binoculars for astronomy. When you think about it, people who come to a class like this, this is often one of the first things that they want us to talk about. Um, what should they buy as a Christmas gift? What should they get if they've just moved to the Sunshine Coast and they want to take advantage of our great skies? So we'll cover that in the class as well. Next. Then, and we did this last time the class was offered, we'll make a visit to the club observatory. That won't be during class time because obviously we want to go there at night. Um, it's a little bit awkward to promise when we will do that. It's always awkward to, we can't predict that because of weather, of course. But at the moment, we can't predict that because the observatory is closed due to the COVID restrictions. So once it's safe to do so, we will open up the club observatory, which is up at the airport, and uh, we'll go up there and have a look at the sky. Next. So just recapping, it will be presented by members of the Astronomy Club. That is the observatory for those of you who haven't been up there. And just as a, a plug for our sponsors, they're not really our sponsors, we are their sponsors, I think. Um, the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, Sunshine Coast Centre, um, that's who we are. Um, the RASC is the, the, the body based in Toronto. Um, that we are now an acknowledged and accredited member of. So if someone joins our club, um, they have to join the RASC as well. But next. As I said before, members of the Astronomy Club will be giving this presenta these presentations and it will include the trip to the observatory. Next. Isn't that pretty? Next. The third class that I will be talking about is restorative justice. 
there is a very active restorative justice program here on the coast and classes have been given in the past uh, to introduce people to the concept and get them actually quite engaged in um, volunteering for the restorative justice program subsequently. Be before Wednesdays, 10 till noon, September 9, 16, 23, 30, as you see there. Next. The presenter will be Nancy Denham. Nancy is very well known in the uh, in various areas, but uh, particularly well known when the subject of restorative justice comes up. So she'll be giving the class, and this will be the second time within a year that she will, or within two years, that she will have given the class. Next. What is restorative justice? This is the textbook definition. It's a process involving those who have a stake in a specific offence, including both the victim and the alleged offender. Next. The aim is to collectively address the harm done, to identify the remedies and the obligations needed to heal and put things right as much as possible. Next. So in the class, we'll be reviewing the history of restorative justice in Canada, the influence of First Nations traditions um, on the process, and learn about how it's being used within the Sunshine Coast community um, and the schools locally too. Next. We'll examine the impacts, the results and the benefits for the offender and the victim. And we'll consider how the restorative justice process can help people um, have those, those very difficult conversations that can, can heal conflict and disputes. Next. Presenter will be Nancy, Nancy Denham, for Wednesdays, September 9 to 30th, 10 till noon, by Zoom, of course. Um, there will be a degree of active participation by members of the class. One of the things which the, the participants engage in is working in groups and of course it won't be happening in face-to-face -face groups it'll be happening in little uh, zoom rooms that we specially set up um, but in order to for everyone to benefit then you have to re really be interested in and willing to participate in uh, the class in a very active way and uh, the class size will be fairly small in order to facilitate this. We will probably limit it to about 15, the first 15 to sign up. Next. Next. Okay, thank you, Michael. We're gonna go to the next speaker now. Just a sec while I get things up. Okay, um, next is Pat Hausberg, who will talk about hot topics. Pat, over to you. Hi, and thanks for your interest. I love hot topics. I've attended every season for the past two years, and I'm very excited to co-facilitate these fall sessions with my colleague Selma Swab for the first time. Hot topics is a unique experience providing a safe environment for people to freely discuss major issues from their own perspectives. Next slide, please. Next slide. Um, the sessions will be held from September 14th to October 26th. And um, we'll have a limit of uh, 15 people per, per, per class this session. And um, next slide, please. And the format is a moderated roundtable driven by the interests of the group members. They select the topics to be discussed each session. Subjects range widely from politics, history, culture, and science, to name just a few. As we are going online for this season, we will be able to take advantage of Zoom's visual features to enrich our sessions with slideshows, short videos, and other resources, which I think will make the discussions even more interesting. Next slide, please. 
the hot topics are perfect for people who enjoy lively conversations, diversity of opinions, and are looking to expand their horizons on a variety of issues affecting our world and are open to learning from each other in this process. Next slide, please. So you're welcome to join the conversation and bring your views on issues that matter to you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. And next on the, on the slate is, uh, is Ron Kidd to talk about adventures and travel. Ron, over to you. Um, hi, um, adventures and travel this year will, as usual, tour the world. Uh, it's on, the course is on four Thursdays from 2 to 4 p.m. in October. And on the next slide, uh, you'll see the, the first speaker, Phil Cunnington, he and his wife, Holly, took a long tour in China, um, and he's going to be, Phil is an excellent photographer, and he's showing a lot of the, the photographs that he took. I don't know what time of day he had to get up to get a picture of the Great Wall with nobody standing on it. Um, you can also see here the, the <coughs> Terracotta Army and uh, Shanghai at night, and then uh, in the middle is what is beautifully named, I think, the Lingering Gardens. I love the name of that one. Mm -hmm. uh, the next slide, uh, our next uh, presentation on the 15th of October is by Betty Chadwick. She's talking about Peru. Betty is also an excellent mm -hmm. photographer. I love the misty scene of Machu Picchu you see in, in the top left corner there. And then Betty also took pictures in the villages and towns around Machu Picchu. There's a woman uh, weaving, an elderly woman, and just a street scene disappearing. I love the colors on this one too. The, 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 uh, with the flowers outside every door. Then on the next slide, it's a different kind of travel. Um, it shows, uh, this is Barb Chapman. She's talking about freighter cruising. And <clears throat> that's Barb sitting in the chair there. This is on the bridge of the ship. And I think that's the captain standing behind her, uh, wondering when he's going to get his chair back. Um, <laughs> you can see uh, there's a very peaceful scene going through the, the Panama Canal down there in one corner, unloading uh, containers up in the right-hand side. I think that was in California. Um, Barb will also tell us about one trip that she took um, it was a very small ship, and they were caught in a force 10 gale. Um, force 11 is hurricane force. They were actually locked down in their cabins for three days. Uh, I guess they were worried about them being damaged, hurt in the storm. The ship was damaged. Luckily, uh, as you can see by the fact that Barb is here, it didn't turn over or anything like that. Uh, and then the final presentation on the 29th of October is a, a, a description of a small ship cruise that my wife and I took from Athens to Singapore, a very long cruise. It was our second ever cruise uh, and we did a long one. That's the ship up in the corner, the legend. Uh, and if you want to learn why down in the bottom left side, you see uh, people kayaking on some, under some strange sort of ledge, what they're doing there, why these people are standing chest deep in water, and also why that silly looking fellow is there holding what really looks like a rifle, uh, you'll have to attend the course. So it's four Thursdays in October. I hope you can make it. Thanks, Ron. Right. With that, just a sec while I make some adjustments here. And, Jack Pope was next, who will introduce his revised course on iPhone photography based. Jack, over to you. Hi, everybody, and uh, welcome to a digital world. The iPhone has seamlessly connected us to this world, and the iPhone camera has revolutionized photography. So this course will teach you how to take better pictures with your iPhone. 
but probably equally important is how do we keep all those darn pictures organized? It'll take place on four Friday afternoons in November, just in time to get you ready for Christmas and perhaps a vacation in the not too distant future. This is a hands-on course. So you'll need your iPhone to practice what is being demonstrated, but you'll also need a computer or a laptop or an iPad to be able to watch the lesson. The class size uh, is limited to 12 people to provide individual help. Next slide, please. The functionality of the iPhone camera has increased significantly and couple that with new software and apps, and it has become a very sophisticated camera, rivaling the quality of much bigger and more bulky cameras. So this year I've split the course into two. There's the introduction this fall, and then we'll do the, an advanced course in the spring. The introductory, the introductory course will focus on learning how to master all of the camera controls from taking basic pictures to video, live view, slow motion, panoramas. You'll also learn how to adjust for those challenging light conditions, how to lock in focus to avoid blur so you get nice, clean, crisp pictures. Next slide, please. Next, we'll learn how to take better pictures using classical composition strategies that artists have been using for hundreds of years to attract and hold the attention of the viewer. Foreground framing helps to frame the subject in your composition, guiding the eye to where to look. In this case, a beautiful sunset over one of the trail islands. Next slide, please. Positioning your subject off to the side pulls the eye in that direction, again, guiding the eye to the main subject. In this case, we have a secondary subject which creates tension and interest as the eye moves back and forth between the sunset and the kayak. Next slide, please. Our eyes are naturally attracted to lines, and in this case, they carry the eye toward our subject, a beautiful lighthouse uh, in Cape Cod. Next slide, please. We'll also learn some basic editing strategies to make a good picture, next, better. We cropped out the distractions in that previous picture. We straightened up the horizon. The masts of the boats are straight and we bring out the vibrant colors of the sunset. Finally, we'll tackle the problem of, finally, we'll tackle the problem of what to do with the thousands of pictures that we take, but never look at. It's easy to take lots of pictures, but if we don't tidy up like Marie Kondo, our collection quickly becomes cluttered with debris. We'll look at a simple way to review Decide on the ones that we want to keep and where to keep those keepers organized so that you can find and fully enjoy all of these wonderful memories. Four Fridays in November from one o'clock to three o'clock. And I look forward to seeing you online. Thank, Thank you. Doc. My turn. I will now introduce four courses. First is Mythical Creatures in Western Thought and Culture. Vivica Holm will be returning for another great course on literature. She's making a, a bit of a departure from the past and will be presenting on mythical creatures in literature. What a great thing. The course will run for four Tuesday mornings in September from 10 till noon. Each session will have a theme explaining the role and significance of different categories of mythical creatures. Vivica will start 
Difficult. We'll start with beasts of power and glory, including unicorns, dragons, phoenixes, and the like. The second session will cover hybrid creatures. And you can see from the slide, there is no shortage of candidates in this category. My favorites include the goat-like demons. The third session will be on shapeshifters. And finally, the final session will be on animals that raise us, save us, and trick us. Crows and ravens will both feature large. Vivica's courses over several years have received high praise, and this one will certainly continue the tradition of high quality instruction. It should be a particularly fun course, and I encourage you to join us on Zoom to explore uh, this fascinating theme. The next course is Canadian history. This is my course and a follow on to the course on early Canadian history I presented in spring 2019. We will start this course in 1848. Those who took my earlier course will know why this date is so important. It marks the introduction of responsible government in the colonies that would become Canada. The emergence of democracy. It's a great transition to the process of building a country from a scattering of diverse colonies. The course will run on the first four Tuesdays in November, 2, 9, 16, and 23, from 2 to 4 p.m. A great deal happened in Canada in that period, and I will be covering uh, as much as I can, and we will explore the why and, as well as the who and the what. It's always fun to look at what was going on behind the scenes that motivated people to do what they did. These next two slides. Give some of the major milestones of the period that I will be talking about, and you can expect quite a bit on the First World War. It acted as an accelerant in Canadian history. So a very interesting periods over these two slides. Running right through the South African War, the First World War, the Depression, and the rise of communism and fascism. Here are some of my favorite creatures, characters rather, uh, in Canadian history in this period. Sir John A, of course, Louis Riel, chief pound maker, figured quite a significant player in the, uh, in the rebellion of 1885. General Sir Arthur Curry, who commanded the Canadian Corps in the First World War, and his prime minister, Sir Robert Borden, and we all know William Lyon Mackenzie King, and the Vim Memorial, a significant, a significant uh, memorial to, uh, to Canada's contribution in the First World War. The next course I want to talk about is astrogeomorphology. Ray Kostaschuk returns by popular demand for another course on his academic specialty, geomorphology. This time he is going to hit it out of this world. Not many of us are familiar with the term astrogeomorphology, but Ray will tell us about this interesting topic. The course will run for four sections on Tuesday, October 20th and 27th, and November 3rd and 10th from 2 to 4 p.m. The course is about how the geology of the surface of extraterrestrial planets and moons changes over time from a great variety of factors. New information and technology have allowed people like Ray to take the study of geomorphology to other bodies in the solar systems. Here is the course outline. This will be fascinating. Some examples to entice you. Here in this enhanced photograph shows the formation and changes on the moon's surface from impact craters now the Oriental Basin. The formation and evolution of the solar system's highest mountain, the volcano Olympus Mons on Mars, a mountain more than three times as high as Mount Everest. It'll be interesting to learn about that. This one is fascinating. Here is a ri river of liquid methane eroding the water ice surface of Titan, Saturn's largest move, moon. Please come join us for another series of presentations by our resident expert on the morphology of geology, Ray Kostaschuk. Enjoying science fiction and fantasy. Four Wednesdays, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., October 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th. This course is being presented by a new instructor to our Elder College lineup. Clint Butt is an author and the past president of the Canadian 
Science Fiction and Fantasy Association and is heavily committed to advancing this interesting genre of literature. The course is run, as I said, on four Wednesdays in October. Clint will first lay down the groundwork for the courses, looking at the origins of the genre and the current landscape, drawing from the array of media where this fascinating genre can be found. Themes will include strangers in a strange land, the intersection of history and speculative fiction, and more. Clint has a fascinating lineup for each session, starting with movies on October 7th. He'll then move on to writing and pictures and, and words on October 14th. Then science fiction, art and authorship on October 21st. And finally, gaming and science fiction conventions on October 28th. Clint has arranged for some remarkably interesting speakers and authors to join him in presenting this course. It will be a great treat for anyone interested in science fiction and fantasy. Give it a go. We'll wrap things up. Addressing the Clifford Smith Memorial Lecture. As we are in the midst of a pandemic, our speaker for this presentation is particularly appropriate. I will turn it over to Michael Bradley to talk about our speaker. Michael. Thank you, Keith. Yeah, the Clifford Smith Lecture, um, we planned this last year and we found our speaker last year um, long before COVID came on the scene. Turns out that it was, uh, well, shall we say it's timely. Uh, but before we talk about the uh, speaker, let's talk about the Clifford Smith Lecture itself. It's named after the late Clifford Smith. He was an educator and superintendent of schools, SD46 here. And he was a passionate advocate of lifelong learning and as such was very involved in the original Elder College Board and was former chair. In his memory, we've had this lecture for, I don't know now, how many years. It's always free and it's always open to everybody. And we presented usually in September or October with the fall series of Elder College courses. And that's how it's going to be this time. Of course, this will be the first time that it's being done um, by Zoom. Anyway, let's move on to the uh, next slide, please, Keith. So the title is The Immune System, Its Protective and Destructive Nature. And the presenter will be Dr. Erwin Diener. Next. Uh, these are the dates. It will be, that's right, the dates, because it's only on the one occasion, uh, November the 14th. I imagine it will be recorded and um, likely made available through our website, although I'm not sure that that's actually being determined yet. On the day of the, uh, the talk, it will be free and it will be open to everyone. Next. So Dr. Dina, many of you may recognize that face. He's very heavily involved in many activities of an environmental nature, horticultural nature here on the coast. He, um, in the context of the talk though, the significant thing is that he's a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada. He's internationally celebrated as a scientist and his accomplishments are very numerous. So numerous and significant that we can't really do justice to them here. Next. In the words of a colleague, quoting here, Dina is a world prominent immunologist, represents a scientist of extraordinary ability whose career has made a major impact on the discipline and who has received worldwide acclaim for his findings. He's also recognized internationally as founding chairman of one of the most exciting immunology departments in Canada. He's a longtime resident of the Sunshine Coast, and lives in Seashell. Next. So here are some words from Dr. Dina. First of all, he's describing the immune system. Um, the, the, the individuality of the body is protected, is guarded by complex cellular molecular interactions, which allow the body to distinguish between self and foreign. Those words come up frequently when talking about the immune system. 
So the lectures will center on understanding those interactions and showing how they provide immunity from potentially fatal invasions by bacteria and viruses, because we're dealing with that now, and also from cancer cells whose molecular structures deviate from self. How does the body fight off things that aren't, that shouldn't be there? Through knowledge of the subtle dynamics that underlie this distinction between self and not self, we'll learn, we'll comprehend the body's vulnerability to autoimmune diseases. Next. It's going to be quite a class. Well, I imagine there'll be very heavy um, number of uh, registrations for it. We will be increasing our Zoom license, I think, for this one because it'll go way beyond the 100 that we're limited to right now. I should point out that you will have to pre-register for this. You won't just be able to dial in on the day, or log in on the day. You will have to pre-register ahead of time so that we can, in fact, manage um, the size of the audience and also to make sure that there are no uh, interruptions. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this unusual preview for our fall 2020 online offering. We plan to open registration at 12 noon on August 20th, 2020. Please sign up right away while spaces are still available. Thanks for watching.